Hi, it's Mary. I hope you're doing well. I decided recently that I would do a series of videos on researching your family history. I have actually been researching mine for about five years and it's been fun. I've learned some information and I've made a few discoveries. And I thought that in this first video, I would share some of the things I've learned and some of the information that you'll want to know before you actually start your research. So what I did was I took a piece of paper and on it I wrote all the information I knew about each of my relatives. So I'm just going to stand up and show this to you. So this has got my grandfather on it and I just wrote down everything I knew about him. So his birthday, his wife, his parents' names, his siblings, places I know he's lived, um, jobs I know he's had, when he came to the United States, when he was naturalized, his children's names. So I did that for all my relatives. I actually have some of the sheets here and it's just to have everything about that person in one place. Later I actually went and put them on cards because that's just kind of a smaller format and everything's just nice and compact. You can do whatever works best for you. From that information, I went online and I searched for blank family tree charts. I found this one on Ancestry.com and they're all basically laid out the same way. So it's got a person, so this would say that was me, well, say that was my dad. The line leads, it goes upwards, his dad is there, his mom is there, and then it goes onward with her parents, my grandfather's parents, their parents, all the way back. You can do multiple sheets for each family, and then you can fill out all the information. So I take the information that I have on the sheets, and I put it onto the blank family chart. And the nice thing about the blank family tree chart is that it's very easy to see where your gaps in information are. Because it's going to ask for like the person and then where they were born and when they were born and where they were married and when they were married and where they died and when they died. And that's for everybody. And so you'll see who you're missing information on and like you might not have some people's names so you know you're missing that information for that family. So when you have all the information that you know written down, then you're going to start trying to find information in other places. Other family members are a great resource for this. Um, I was lucky in that one of my dad's cousins did a family tree for part of his family, and one of my mom's cousins did a family tree for my grandpa, part of my grandfather's family. And so people generally who are into family research are happy to share their family trees with you, and you can find out a lot of information that way. Um, if you don't have anyone who in your family who is researching family history or if you've gotten all the information that you can from them, from them, you can also check with older relatives or just any relatives and see what they know about the family. And when you interview your relatives, you don't want to ask just questions about specific family members. I generally like to ask about the person's life and find out about them. Sometimes that'll even bring up a story about the person you're interested in. So you might be talking to your aunt about her life and then you find out a story about your grandmother when she was little or something. So just be open to hearing about their life and also it's helpful to have questions ready for them because a lot of people put feel like they're put under pressure or put on the spot when you're like, tell me about the family. So if you have specific family, specific questions prepared in advance, you just make the conversation go a lot easier. Um, you, a couple things to keep in mind when you're interviewing people. Not everyone looks at the same specific 
event the same way. So while you or your mom might view a family occurrence in one way, other relatives might view it in another way. So if somebody presents something to you and it's different than the way you thought it was or the way you think it is or they feel differently about it than you do, you don't need to get into an argument with them obviously about the situation. Just be respectful and open to listening to their side of the story. At some point in doing your family history research, you are going to find out a secret. And be respectful of that too. Like if you're interviewing a relative and they tell you a secret, they're probably like entrusting you with that secret. So you don't want to violate that trust and go and tell everybody everything you've heard. Just make sure that you're respectful and not being, not causing any problems for anybody. Um, you also, like I know some people when they hear something it's like gossip and they go out and they gossip about it and tell people and you don't really need to do that either and I know that you're probably more respectful than that. I just know people who have done silly things and I guess I feel the need to present that as a thing to be aware of. Um, the reason there are family secrets, and some of them are things you're like, well, why would that be a secret? A lot of events are painful for people, and it's hard to talk about painful events. And when you don't talk about it, then nobody knows about it, and that's kind of how family secrets are created. So just be aware of that, and make sure that you are not adding to problems for people. So whenever I get information from people, I just sit down after I've talked to somebody and I write it all out. And then that way I have it to refer to later. If I'm like, what did they say about Uncle George? Then you can just go back and look, oh yeah, he was an ice cream truck driver or whatever. Um, and then you can also add the information that they gave you to your family tree and you have that filled in there. So when you have your completed family tree or completed as much as you know, it's going to direct you on what you want to do next or help you figure out what you want to do next. Like if you have a part of the family that you know a lot about, you might just want to follow that line and get all that information written and then go follow another line later. Sometimes you think you have a lot of information and you really don't. Like my grandfather, we knew a lot about him, but actually had the hardest time finding stuff. And then once we did, it just opened up a whole new avenue of research and interactions with people. So that's cool. So gather your information together, get your family charts filled out, and next time we'll look at one of the websites and the information you can get on websites about your family history and just kind of how to do that research. I hope this was helpful and that you enjoy researching your family history. I actually learned a lot about my family, a lot about myself, and a lot about life from looking into my family's past. So enjoy your search and we'll talk more next time. Thank you.